Big warm welcome, Dr. Monica Webby! It's all a game show host, right? Hi everybody, thank you so much for being here and allow allowing me an opportunity to talk with you. Um, it's been a long drive today, but, uh, but I'm so happy to be here, such a beautiful day. Um, the question I get asked the most is why? Starting with my four teenagers, they said, Mom, why? Would you leave a job that you train until you're 35 years old to do and everybody loves you to jump into uh, this den of vipers, this snake pit? Um, sometimes I think I need up my own brain scanned. <laughs> but um, I, I tell them, that uh, a story about a little boy I took care of years ago, a little boy with a brain tumor. And he came to me and I took the tumor out. He did really well. Then he came back and he gave me a thank you note. And on that thank you note it said, if we're not here to make life better for one another, then what's the point? And I've always, taken that message to heart because look at the way things are going now senator merkley's answer to everything is another big massive federal program a government that dictates mandates regulates controls every single aspect of your life he must not remember where he lives because this country was founded by people trying to get away from that that's right. That is not who we are. And it'd be one thing if it worked. It doesn't work. Look at where we are now. He runs around telling everybody how he's for the middle class. You know what's happened to the middle class since he's been in office for six years? Our average middle class salary is down $3,000 from six years ago. Our gas price has doubled. Our energy prices are up. Our premiums for health care are set to go up 45% this year, according to the Manhattan Institute. And our world is much more dangerous now for our children. What do you think about that? With friends like that, who needs enemies? That is not what we want for our middle class. What am I going to do for you as your United States Senator? First thing I'm going to do is fix Obamacare. Repeal it. You know, I'm a doctor. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been in medical policy for 30 years. I've been working to fix Obamacare for five. I know what we need to do to fix that. What? You know, we had 250 million people who were happy with their insurance, 50 million who didn't have it. So you know what? $2.7 trillion later, we still are going to have 30 million people uninsured. Go figure. Why didn't we just buy them all an insurance policy? We're spending $80,000 per person that we're insuring with this health care plan. There is a better way, not to mention the 250 million we threw away here on Cover Up Oregon. 300. Now, what else about healthcare? We're gonna fix our VA. Our vets deserve better. How many of you vets out there? You deserve better. And we are gonna make sure, I worked in the VA when I was a resident. We're gonna fix the VA. We're not gonna do this disservice to people who sacrifice their lives for us. We're gonna balance our budget. We have to balance our budget home. We're spending 50 cents on every dollar that we, that we spend as a government. We are mortgaging our children's future. It's generational theft, and we ought to be ashamed. That's not right. 
We need to bring in these regulations that are paralyzing our small businesses. They're like a noose around the neck on our, of our businesses. Government control, whenever they get going too far, they just yank that noose and paralyze our businesses. We have got to get control of these out of control agencies. We need better oversight. And then finally, we have got to re-establish ourselves as a world leader. Look at what is happening. When, when we abandon our role as a world leader, somebody much less benevolent than us is going to fill that spot, and that is what's happening now. Our friends can't trust us. Our enemies don't fear us. And our children are living in a much more dangerous world now. So how do we fix this? We start electing different people. We start electing people who are accountable for what they do. All of you have to be accountable for what you do. You can't just say, your computer crashed and you lost all the files. As a neurosurgeon, when somebody hands me their little baby, their most precious gift that they love more than anything in the world, say, Dr. Webby, take care of my baby, and I take that baby back to the operating room, I'm responsible for that little Oregonian. I'm responsible for that life, and I can't blame anything that goes wrong on anybody else but me. I'm used to being responsible, just like each one of you are. But what's happening now? We have gotten so used to incompetence and dishonesty that we just expect it now. We expect it from our government. Look at the scandals. NSA, IRS, what else? Benghazi, Fast and Furious, immigration, VA, good Lord. We should not be putting up with this. We need leaders who are going to be held accountable. And, and speaking of IRS, how many of you guys know that Senator Merkley got together with six of his Democrat colleagues and wrote that letter to the IRS asking them to investigate groups based on their political beliefs? How many of you know that? Do you think Oregonians are proud of their junior senator that he uses a government agency to silence his critics. And believe me, I've been on the receiving end of some of his techniques to try to silence people who disagree with him. And I'm sick of it. And I hope that you guys are not believing that. You don't believe the crap that they put out there. That's what they try to do. They try to silence their opponents. That's not who we are as a country. We need to elect leaders that have common sense, that are logical instead of ideological. Yeah. yeah. Senator Merkley was rated one of the most extreme senators in the Senate. And when you're way on one side on the left, way on one side on the right, you're never in the room when the problems are solved because everybody thinks you're too ideological to have any common sense. And if we want to move the ball down the court, if we want to get things done for the American people, we have to be able to talk to each other and get past this polarization and gridlock. And finally, we've got to elect people that put America and Oregon first, above their own career, above their own political party. Now when you have somebody who's a career politician, all they care about is their own career and getting reelected. Do you remember in 2008 when Merkley was running against our man Gordon Smith? Do you remember that? You remember when he made an ad that said Gordon Smith was too polarized that he voted 90% of the time with George Bush. You know how much Merkley votes with his party? When he's feeling really bipartisan, it's 95% of the time. 
Other years, it's 98. He's a rubber stamper for Harry Reid, Barbara Boxer, Al Franken. Why do we even need him there? We're Oregonians. We're independent-minded. We don't agree with anybody 95% of the time, let alone Harry Reid. Every time I've spoken to people, and I know those of you that have heard me before, I always ask the same question. How many of you think your children are going to have the same opportunities that we had growing up? I will tell you, out of probably 30,000 people, I've seen five people raise their hand. And I'm not going to sit back here and tolerate it. That's why I got into this race for our kids. I can't stand it. And I am not going to sit back and watch it happen. How many of you feel more secure than you did six years ago? More secure in your job? More secure in your children's education? You just heard Dennis say that uh, we're, what, 49th in graduation rates. What about your ability to pay your mortgage, buy gas? What about your ability to be safe with the world the way it is? We can change this. They tell us we have to accept this new normal, that this is where we are, and I do not believe that. Do you? No. no. Well, let's don't. Let's change it. And I tell you what, I hear that some of you think that we are not a Big Ten party. We are a Big Ten party and we accept differences amongst us, but we all are fiscal conservatives and we've got to turn this thing around. Somebody who is with you 80% of the time is a friend and an ally, not a 20% traitor. Now you need to remember that when we get out and vote. Because if we don't all get out and vote as a party, you're voting for Merkley. And he is against you 100% of the time. So we have got to get out and win this election and turn things around. People ask me, has it been worth it? Has it been worth what I've been through what my family's been through, what my friends have been through. And I tell you what, I think about our generations ahead of us. And I think about those moms and those dads that had those little babies, taught them how to walk, <coughs> got them potty trained, got them through grammar school, taught them their ABCs, how to read, get them to high school, get them a date for homecoming, have bad breakups with their girlfriend, cry all night long, go through all that, teach them how to drive, get them a car, graduate from high school, go join the military, and they never see them again. I am not going to let that sacrifice go for nothing. Are you? No. no. Let's turn this around. We can win this election. Let's turn this country around. This is not about me or you. It's about our country. And we cannot drop the ball now. Kind of like U of O did yesterday. We cannot drop the ball. I'm teasing. I'm a domer. I went to Notre Dame. Sorry. <laughs> We cannot drop the ball. We have got to do this. We've got to do this, and we can. So um, all of you, please get out to vote. Remember that there's 38% Democrats, 31% Republicans, and then all these independent, not affiliated voters in the middle. We've got to get all the Republicans out, and we've got to get our friends in the middle to come our way as well. We, we can't win this all by ourselves. But if we don't get out to vote as Republicans, we don't have a chance, and we are going to be stuck continuing in the same direction we're on. So thank you all so much for being here. Please take yard signs, put them out there, get your friends to vote. It's time. This is our year, because if we don't turn it around now, 
We got to turn it around now. Thank you.